Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a funny story from the IT field. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. The Delayed Prestigious Event The Environment I work in IT at a company where working time usually is handled lenient. You can work on any workday between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m., just not for more than 12 hours a day and have to get your 40 hours in every week, with some overflow allowed, but you're not allowed to work outside these hours or on weekends unless you get a written permit from our central HR board. The First Incident You all know that when something happens in IT, you sometimes have to react. So the day comes and I get a call on a weekend that an important system has gone down. I realize it's no big deal, so I cancel my plans and go in on a Saturday evening. Nothing fancy planned. The whole problem is rather easy to fix. I switch to the reserve server, load config files, reload the backups, and everything's back up and running in two hours. The following week, I have to do it all again because the spare hardware used in a pinch was not powerful enough. The fallout. So during the next week, the crap really starts to hit the fan. First, I get some bullcrap from the supply office for using the spare server. It's supposed to be always in reserve if a core system goes down. What just happened on the weekend? And the person using it has to immediately order a replacement. I told them I couldn't do it because none of the guys were there when it was urgently needed and the replacement order was with them on Monday. We talk a bit, workshop, and he laughs it off telling me he had to remark it because official guidelines and to be more careful next time. Next is HR. I got the notice from a Karen that the Saturday repair was not covered by any written permit that I should have gotten at least a week ahead of time. She doesn't understand a thing about IT, but tells me that I always need to have a written permit or it'll have direct consequences. I will not get paid for that time, and I'm even getting pointed for being in when I'm not allowed to. It even goes so far that if this happens again, my contract's in danger. I get all this in writing. From now on, I always check my times there, but luckily the next three months, no important system goes down at the weekend. The setup. Our company is hosting a big event at a nice local location. A week-long 8 a.m. Monday till Friday international meeting with 90% external guests and lots of prestige. I'm informed that I need to set up IT. We go in a group to the location and find that there's only a closed network available, so we have to provide our own IT. I order the necessary access points to provide Wi-Fi network, a decent beamer, etc. Nice to work with a great budget. It all arrives two weeks before the conference. In the week before the conference, I start setting up. Monday, I configure the APs and make sure all the hardware is fully operational. Tuesday, I arrive at the event location and find it occupied. Asking my event liaison, I find out the location is booked only for the following week. So I spend half a day tracking down the person responsible for the venue and get told it's booked till Friday midday. I go to my boss and tell him that I can't set up because it's occupied. He's furious about this oversight, but accepts that it's not my business to make sure the venue's booked correctly. The whole matter is escalated and by the end of the day, we get the permit to start setting up on Friday afternoon. Wednesday comes and I tell my boss that half a day won't be enough to set up Beamer recording slash streaming sign-in station and Wi-Fi. I told him that I expected it to be four days of work, but that I'm willing to work through the weekend to get at least all the important stuff done till Monday. He agrees and I file for a special permit to work overtime on the weekend. He even attaches a note on how important this is and it's rushed to HR. I spend the rest of the day going through the network planning, going home a bit early, knowing the next days will be stressful. Thursday, I start to prep as good as I can, configure every firmware, do a dry run on my desk of the setup, make sure all the cables are available and boxed up in a nice set for each task. This at least should be saving a bit of time when setting up. Friday morning, I still haven't received my written permit from HR yet, so I decide to give them a call. After a while, I get a hold of the Karen responsible for my file, and she informs me that the application for overtime arrived after this week's board meeting and thus couldn't be granted. Also, she informs me that I should have applied at least a week earlier. I go to the event organizer and tell him that I didn't get the permit for overtime and that I'll have to leave everything this evening unfinished. I can see the color of his face changing from normal to white to red and promises to follow up. He'll contact HR directly and clarify things. 
At 2 in the afternoon, the venue is finally available and I get started. Most reasonable is to get started with the Beamer and presentation system, because you know, without no presentations, and thus no event. It takes me about three hours to set it up, running cables so they're not a hazard, so the presents can use either the system or a laptop and the picture's okay. The event manager comes by and asks how I'm doing. We chat a bit as I introduce the system. He tells me that Karen handling my application is not in this afternoon, so there's still no written permit. After we decide to run the main fiber line for internet, next he's off to organize something for the break slash catering. I run the fiber for the internet and at least confirm that it's active at 7 p.m. I catch the event manager again and ask about the permit. It's still not there. Here comes my malicious compliance and pro revenge into place. I lock away all the valuable hardware as custom and I'm ready to leave just before the deadline. EM asks me what the next steps will be and when it'll be ready and I have to tell him I'll start again on Monday but it won't be finished by 8 a.m. when the event starts. He's speechless as I leave. During my weekend, I relax and turn my work phone off. I see a flood of work emails coming in, but hey, if I'm not allowed to work on weekends, I also don't need to check these. Monday, 7 a.m., the earliest I'm allowed to work again, according to HR, I show up. It's pandemonium. IT still the same as I left it on Friday. A completely disarranged event manager asked me, begging how long it takes to set up the signing station because the first guests will arrive in half an hour and need to be registered. I get to work setting it up as fast as I can, but it still takes until nearly 9 a.m. till all the credentials are loaded and the digital sign-in can start. All the while, I hear mumbling that the Wi-Fi isn't working. No surprise, the access points are not installed at all, not even the wires run. The event manager organized a second breakfast for the waiting guests and excuses all the time for the technical difficulties. At 9 a.m., the event can finally start. There's no Wi-Fi, there's no internet for the online presentations, and there's no streaming. I can't continue to set up since this would mean me running around with a ladder during the presentation, so I grab a second breakfast and wait. Shortly before the delayed 10.30 coffee break, the event manager, my boss, and even COO come up to me and ask what's the holdup. The COO is enraged that this state is embarrassing the whole company in front of all their international partners, no Wi-Fi for them, and no stream online. I tell him that Karen explicitly forbid me to work on weekends without the written permit and even show the write-up from earlier. Giving up, he just asks what I need to get it all done as fast as possible. I immediately get a small note just saying, Mr. OP is permitted to work as much overtime as needed and is permitted to acquire all resources he deems necessary, signed COO and head of HR. We end up hiring some sparkies, electricians, to run the cables and I work till nearly the next morning to get it all operational by the second day. The rest of the event was a full success and everyone was happy with the IT besides the first day. As the cherry on top, Karen's no longer my HR manager. I also have the direct phone number, even private mobile, to the local head of HR and can request overtime in a non-written form at any time. Sometimes it pays off to play exactly by the rules, even if they make no sense. And our next story. This has to be a joke. Tell me exactly why. About a year ago, I worked at a hotel slash conference center restaurant as a bartender. As a relatively large property slash venue, we did a lot of private company events as well as many weddings. To handle these generally large groups, the hotel had a banquet event staff that handled these events by setting up temporary bars with their own bartenders. Well, one day I'm busy handling my bar inside the restaurant and one of the banquet event managers comes to me to tell me they've cut off an intoxicated guest that's been frequenting their temporary bar in the event hall. This is a relatively normal practice and they give me a visual description and a last name of the patron. But before I can ask exactly why the guest was cut off, they tell me to watch my female co-workers because he was trying to force one of the banquet bartenders into a closed storage closet. Bad news. Don't know why they didn't call the cops, not my call, and I didn't witness anything. Business starts to pick up at the restaurant bar and I start to become busy when all of a sudden a man fitting the description comes up and orders a double Tito's and soda. Without hesitation, I ask him for his last name, which he tells me promptly, thinking I'm just going to start him a tab, it's the guy. So I tell the guy, who we'll call Perv very professionally, 
I'm sorry, sir, but I've been told you've been cut off tonight from another bar and cannot get you any more alcohol. This is where the fun starts. Perv is with another dude that works for the same company who starts giving me a hard time about not getting Perv another drink. As soon as this demand for justification starts playing out, Perv also starts making a scene as to how ridiculous him being cut off is. Perv has the nerve to ask why he was cut off. At this point, I can't believe the guy's about to let me potentially put him on blast like this. I give him a final out by saying, sir, I'm really going to have to insist you leave the bar. It seems like, by your actions, you've had a bit to drink tonight. As soon as I say this, his co-worker starts busting my chops again about cutting him off and demanding a reason, saying, This has to be a joke. Tell us exactly why. So I let it all hang out. Me to perv. Sir, you've been cut off this evening because you made inappropriate advances at a female bartender working the event in your event area. If you would like, we could have hotel security or police come down here to sort this out. Perv. I have no idea what you're talking about. That girl and I were just talking. Admitting he knows exactly what I was talking about. Perv's co-worker dies inside, looks at me while dying inside, looks at Perv, then removes himself from the situation while still dying inside. Perv was eventually removed by security. This must have been a previous issue because the next day I was called in to meet with the CEO of whatever company Perv worked for, as well as the female bartender in question, and were apologized to profusely. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.